We're all here. Thank you for coming. That was me. <laughs> Hi, John. Yes. Um, okay. To me, when I play, I play the words. I'm singing in my head what the song means. So I might miss some notes along the way, but I hope you get the meaning of um, what the song expresses. On the back of your program, I came across some uh, just really entertaining uh, statements from John Wesley, who was way back in the day a Methodist circuit rider, and he experienced uh, the Holy Spirit while he was out there alone in the woods. He felt his heart warm by the Holy Spirit. And I knew he was a great Methodist preacher, but um, I didn't know he expressed an opinion about singing. Uh, I'll tell you, any keyboard musician that sits down to play for a church service says, Lord, I hope I'm not playing for God's chosen frozen. <laughs> right, John? But um, so singing is really important. And as you can see from the program, John Wesley felt it was very important that the people sing and lift up their voices to God in praise. So we've, I hope you take the time and read all of these points that John Wesley makes. Um, I just going to review number seven. Above all, sing spiritually. In other words, go for it when you sing in church. Praise God. Have an eye to God in every word you sing. Aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to do this, attend strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound, but offered to God continually. So shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve here and reward you when he cometh in the clouds of heaven. And I do want to say that um, some of these uh, hymn arrangements have a number that corresponds to the Baptist hymnal in the, in the pew. Um, we not, I mean, you can sing if you want, praise God, but um, we're gonna have a congregational song right now. Uh, but that is just so, if you're thinking, what are the words to that song? I want to understand what that song is trying to say. So you can flip to the hymnal and kind of remind yourself what the words are that we are doing our best to express through the music. Thank you, Marty. Uh, I want to thank each of you for being here tonight and getting on back to what John Les Wesley said about Directing directions for singing. I had picked, Marty said we need to both pick one. We actually picked the same one. However, she, at, she did the next one and I'm giving you the one. Mine was number three. Sing all, sing that with joy with the, and join with the congregation as frequently as you can. Let not a slight degree of weakness or weariness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, take it up and you will find it a blessing. Uh, while, I, while I read this, and I really should have shared this just before I read it, both of these, all of these have really kind of neat meanings, but uh, I just wanted to share that Marty and I have been working together on music for over 20 years off and on. I would like to also say that she's three weeks younger than me, so we're still young people. <laughs> Okay, thank you, and uh, turn in your hymnal, and please stand, and we're going to sing page four, To God Be the Glory, all three verses.
Next piece is a, is a, a real well-known piece. It is well with my soul. It's Carl Rucker's favorite piece. He's asked me whenever he passes on to play it for his funeral. And he might outlive me. <laughs> but anyway, just to share, we as church musicians, it's one thing to set, come in and sit down and play a piece of music that's entertainment. If you have no idea what it is, you will say, that's a beautiful piece of music. In my, in my background, Marty's also, we've talked about this. We can come and play something for you, and you will like it. You'll say, it's a piece of music. I enjoyed it, but you have no idea the background or what it means. That's one of my things, and when I've directed the choirs over the years, I have explained from the, through the choirs, but also from in front of the congregation, this choir piece means a certain, certain thing. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about It Is Well With My Soul. It's a little bit longer than I wanted, but I couldn't cut any more out when I did the research on it. The beloved hymn was written by a Presbyterian layman from Chicago named Horatio Spafford. He was a lawyer and had a very successful legal practice. He also maintained a keen interest in the Christian activities. He was active in a relationship with D.L. Moody and other evangelists of that era. He was a noted gospel musician as a man of unusual intelligence and refinement, deeply spiritual and devoted student of scriptures. He had invested heavily in real estate on the shores of Lake Michigan only months before the great Chicago fire of 1871. His holdings were wiped out in this disaster. Desiring rest for his wife and four daughters, a trip to Europe was, was scheduled for November of 1873. Due to a last minute business development, he remained in Chicago and sent his wife and daughter on to Europe. On November the 22nd, their ship struck another ship and sank in only 12 minutes. Several days later, the survivors finally landed on Cardiff Wells and Mrs. Spafford's cabled her husband saved alone. Shortly afterwards, Spafford left by ship to join his bereaved wife. It is thought that on the sea near the area of his four, where his four daughters had drowned, Spafford penned this words so significantly described his own personal grief. When billows like sea billows roll, it is noteworthy, however, that Spafford's hymn does not dwell on this theme of life's sorrows and trails, trials, but focuses attention on the third stanza on the redemption, the redemptive work of Christ and his glorious second coming. It is amazing that one could experience such personal tragedy and sorrows as Horatio Spafford did and still be able to say as much in convincing clarity, it is well with my soul.
and sharing with you, with you about this. Uh, Bach wrote a tremendous amount of music, J.S. Bach, and he wrote so much for the pipe organ itself. And I know that Pastor Wes here really likes Bach. So I'm going to play Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring for you. It's a Bach piece, but it was not really written for organ. It was actually from a chorale setting, from a cantata, which Carla Gerding's here, and I cannot pronounce German very well. But anyway, what it means in English is heart and mouth and deed of life. And it was composed in 1723. It is thought to represent Christ ever loving and ever flowing redemptive blood. As you will notice in the music from the very beginning to the end of this piece, it will not stop in the right hand, symbolic of, some, of something ever flowing. Uh, this is a type, a different type of composition from what Marty will be playing in a few minutes. At this time, at that time, she will be giving you a little bit more information on what she's playing and the Bach piece that she's playing and what it means. Thank you. 
I don't really have a lot to say about our next song. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, the words, so you know the words. Every time I feel the spirit moving into my heart, I will pray. On my piano piece, I just want to give you the words. Uh, and I want to tell you these words have worked for me. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Then the chorus says, the Lord liveth. Blessed be my rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Amen.
Okay, it's my turn to talk about Johann Sebastian Bach. He was born in 1685. His first uh, appointment in church was at age 21 in 1706. He was appointed the organist. And for 44 years, he served as organist and choir master right up to his death in 1750. You can imagine at that time, uh, through the 1700s, there was not a lot of music in print, not a lot of books in print. So part of the job of the organist was write your own music. Goes with the job. So he was expected to, and boy did he ever, compose. I'm gonna play a prelude and fugue, and I misspelled the word fugue on the program, I apologize, it should be F-U-G-U-E. Um, prelude and fugue, uh, number seven in A minor. Prelude means music that comes before something else, like the church service, or more sections to follow in the piece. Like in this piece, We'll play the prelude, and then the fugue comes, okay? The word fugue means to flee, put to flight. So in the introduction of the fugue, um, there's a little musical statement. I'll play it for you. So that's, that's the little theme of the fugue. But from that point on, it starts playing tag with itself and different variations of that little piece. So just listen, you'll hear that little theme fleeing and chasing itself all the way through the entire fugue um, to the end where everything comes together.
I forgot something I meant to say. Every, when Bach wrote, he was very aware of his dependence on God. And at the beginning of many of his compositions, he often wrote the initials JJ or JH. So you can pick from Latin, JJ, which means Jesu, Juva, or the German, JH, which stands for Jesus, help me, help me write this piece. And at the end of every piece he wrote, he put the initials SDG standing for solely Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. So that has kind of become the theme of our concert without um, really planning to, but all the glory goes to God. The next piece is my piano solo. And uh, I picked this because I played it a couple years ago and worked, had worked it up, and I really, really liked it. Um, more than wonderful. It was written by Lanny Wolf in about 1980, and it didn't really gain the great popularity until Sandy Patty and Larnell Harris started singing it. And if any of you know them, they are just absolutely awesome. Larnell Harris was actually from Louisville, and it has won several Grammys and Dove Awards. It's truly one of my favorites, and here are a few words of the song. It goes, beyond my hopes and fondest dreams, he is every, everything that my soul ever longed for, everything he's promised, and so much more, more than amazing, more than wonder, marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful. That is what Jesus is to me.
Come to our last song. It's kind of like our amen on everything else. The words that I will be singing in my head, you might be singing the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow, but, and we all know that hopefully, but the words that sing to me in this piece, all people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice, him serve with fear, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Amen. <laughs> 